According to the New Zealand Council for Educational Research, 21st century learning and teaching is a clustering of new ideas, beliefs, knowledge, theories and practices that may be visible in some schools and classrooms, some which exist only in isolated pockets and others which are barely visible yet. Hess and Meek suggest that the broader term of unbuilding can be applied in two dimensions when examining 21st century education. The first is structural unbuilding in which we loosen our grip on traditional ideas about teacher's school or school system and explore how to deliver schooling in new and effective ways. The second is content unbuilding, unbuilding the stuff of learning, revisiting assumptions about the scope and sequence of what students are expected to learn and explore new, more varied approaches to curriculum and coursework. The rapid rate in which globalisation has impacted all aspects of people's lives in the 21st century has not been exempt from the education sector. In fact, it can be argued that education has had to adapt the most in the wake of the influence of globalisation. In the face of globalisation, educational practices and curriculum have had to adjust to cater for a vast increase of information that is available. Cultural diversities within communities and change in location of manufacturing as this impacts directly on youth entering the workforce for the first time and the skills and education needed to find employment. With the shift in Australian society being one of blue collar workers in the 1970s to now a more white collared tertiary educated society in the 21st century, educators have been forced to shift their learning outcomes to areas that allow students to further uh, further education beyond high school. According to Bagnell, globalisation in its simplest form is connected global activity, significantly e economic but also social, political, environmental. Globalisation education implications in relation to Australian society have inf influenced policy making, practice methods and this can be a result of world markets such as the United States and Asia. This is important because it can increase division or inequality among social groups as well as education opportunity in Australia which could raise, uh, could raise issues concerning social justice. New pedagogies or otherwise known as new teaching practice can be explained as a new model of learning partnerships between and among students and teachers aiming towards deep learning goals and enabled pervasive digital access. An example of a new teaching practice is that of group work or student-led discussion. This practice promotes the active collaboration between students to share ideas and knowledge whilst also having guidance from their teachers to stimulate the conversations and learnings when needed. Vygotsky's theory of child development promotes this teaching strategy and although it, has, it was pre presented in the 20th century, education has started to embra embrace it more in the 21st century with a shift in focus on learning. Comparing a traditional teaching practice such as rote learning to that of group work or student-led learning, it can be observed that the two are vastly different. Rote learning involved a teacher at the front of a class dictating to their students whom were sat in rows of desks what they were to write in their notebooks. This practice aimed to force feed the students mass amounts of information with the aim or hope that they would retain the information. Professor Eric Mazur of Harvard University's physics department puts it, students are more asleep during lectures in which they are dictated to than when they are in bed. Group work amongst students places a focus on the child as the centre of education and promotes collaborative thinking and learning between students. Educators in this setting act as stimulus for constructive information-based discussions. Students are encouraged to share their experiences whilst also learning from others around them. 